Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is covering blueprint interfaces and more specifically how to use them to interact. Now these can be used for absolutely anything, not just interacting, but that is the main thing I'm going to be covering today as just an example to show how these work. So let me hit play a show we're going to make today. Very simply, we're just going to create something which will allow us to interact with and open and close this door you see here. And we're doing this via blueprint interfaces, not doing it in the door blueprint itself. This just makes it a lot more efficient and a lot better for us and a lot easier to expand upon further down the line in our game as well. So this is what we'll be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And once again, like I say, this can be used for anything. It doesn't have to be interacting. And if you are doing interacting, it doesn't just have to be for a door. This can be anything you want. So firstly, let's go over what a blueprint interface is. So on the documentation, it is defined as a collection of one or more functions, which are name only, no implementation that can be added to other blueprints. So essentially it's a read only function, which we can call in other blueprints to be able to interact between different blueprints. So essentially a good way of thinking about it, it is like a better and more efficient cast. So this will probably make a lot more sense when we actually start getting into using it. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do first is we want to actually create our Blueprint interface. So we're going to open up our content browser, right click, go to Blueprints, not Blueprint class, just, just Blueprints here, and we're going to create a Blueprint interface that you see here. I'm going to simply name this one Interact Interface, like so, opening it up straight away. The name doesn't matter too much, but I always like to put interface at the end of my name just so I know what it is. This function here, I'm just going to call Interact. That is all we need to do in here. Because again, this is a read only function. It's a read only blueprint. We can't do anything else in here. We can't do the code. We can only name the function itself. However, we can add some inputs and outputs on here if we wanted. So you can add an input, for example, if you wanted a specific character, a controller, you wanted to input a boolean, a float, or you wanted to output a boolean or a float, or anything along those lines, you can just simply press this input button here and do it there like so. It is that simple and that will allow you to then transfer different data between different blueprints. But we're gonna close that, as again, that's all we need to do. Then we want to open up where we want to do the code for this interface. Now this will vary for you depending on what this code is. So for me, it is an interact interface, so it's my interaction code, so I'm gonna do it in my player blueprint. Now you might think you don't also want to do it in your door blueprint or your car blueprint or whatever it is you're interacting with. That's not true, you only want to use whatever's gonna be firing this off. So for me, that's the player blueprint. So I'm gonna go third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. And once we're in here, we just want to set up our interaction code. So what I'm gonna do first is go to edit, project settings. Then we're gonna scroll down to input here, and we're gonna create an action mapping. And I'm gonna name this one interact, as that makes no sense for me. I'm gonna press this button and then press E, as I want it to be on my E key. This can be whatever it is for you, so E, F, or left mouse button. Whatever makes no sense for you, just input that in there. But again, for me, it's going to be the E key. Then we're going to close this. Back in our event graph, we're going to right click and search for the action mapping we just created. So I named mine interact. Now you notice we've got interact message. That's not what we want. That's from the blueprint interface, which we're going to be using later. We want the action event interact here, like so. And then out of this is where we're actually going to do our interaction code. So I'm going to do it based upon what the player is overlapping, not what they're looking at. So I'm going to right click and get overlapping actors with the class filter being simply just actor so if we are overlapping any actors out of the array here we're going to get a for each loop with break so we're going to be searching through all of the different actors we're currently overlapping but being able to stop this loop as well out of the array element we're going to get does implement interface the interface in here wants to be our interact interface we just created like so I'll explain why in a second what we're going to do now is hold on B, left click to get a branch with the condition being the return value, connecting that into the loop body there. So what we're doing is for every actor we have that the player is overlapping, we're going to check to see if it implements the interact interface. And if it does or doesn't, we're going to do different things there. And the reason why we're checking this if it has the interact interface is because we only want to try and interact with things that we can interact with. So let's say we're also overlapping a wall actor. We obviously can't interact with the wall, or I presume you can't anyway, so you don't want to try and interact with it, because that's obviously not going to work, you will most likely get an error. So we only want to do things that have this correct interface in there. So false means we obviously don't want to do anything, 
true means we want, we want to interact with it. So how do we now interact with the actor we're overlapping? That's very simple. We're going to come out of array element once again and get interact. This time we can get that message there under the interact interface and then we put that into true of the branch and that now is going to fire off this interact function inside of the blueprint we're currently overlapping. So this then works the same way in calling any function. It's calling it the target being the actor we're now overlapping. And this is why it makes it a lot more efficient. Because normally what you do is you do this code or something similar to this in every single blueprint you have in the level that you want to interact with. Whereas here we just need to do it once in our player blueprint and then each individual blueprint we want to interact with, we just have the specific code for that. For example, a door would be opening and closing, a car would be getting in and out, whatever it is for you, we just do the code in there and actually interacting with it in here. So it just makes it a lot more efficient. And after this, we just need to drag out of interact at the end into break there. So once we have found something to interact with, we're gonna stop searching through the array, stop doing the for loop so again, makes it a lot more efficient because otherwise we'd also be interacting with everything we're currently overlapping, which you might want to do, but I imagine you don't. For example, if you're maybe doing an inventory system, you're standing above five items, pressing E, you only want to pick up one, not all five at the same time. So we're gonna compile and save that and close it and move on to the next part, which is a lot quicker. This is now actually just firing off the interaction code. So we're gonna open up the blueprint we want to interact with. So again, for my example, that is going to be a door BP here. Now I've already set up all the code for interacting with the door as it's nice and simple. This is all we need to do. And all we need to do now to actually fire this off using the interaction code we just created is we want to go to class settings up at the top and you notice we have interfaces, implemented interfaces, no interfaces here. So we obviously want to give it an interface. So we're gonna press add and search for interact interface, the one we just created earlier, and we're gonna add that on there. And now you'll notice a new tab on the left called interfaces and we have our interact interface here. So it's our interact function. So we can double click that and we're now gonna get this event in here. So if you had an output, this will open it as a function. So if I were to just create a function, it will open it up like this. But because I don't have any outputs, it's just giving it as an event like so. So now all we need to do is in that function or that event, you just connect in the code you want to fire off for your interaction. So again, for me, that is opening and closing a door. And it is that simple. So now when we try to interact in the player blueprint, what we're gonna do is search to see if we're overlapping anything. If we are, fire off the interaction code for that blueprint, which will then fire off this event here in whatever blueprint you're overlapping or whatever blueprint you're trying to interact with. And it's gonna fire off this code and do what we want. So we're gonna compile and save that. Now the final thing I need to do, because I'm doing this based upon overlaps, not if I'm looking at it, what I need to do is go to the viewport, add a component, and I need to add a box collision, although I haven't deleted it, sorry. So what I need to do now is just add a simple box collision on here so we can actually overlap with this actor. Again, if you're doing it based on a line trace, so if you're looking at it, you don't need to worry about this. This is only if you're going to be overlapping it like I am. I'm just going to scale that up to the size we want so the player has to be within this box collision here in order to interact with it. So this would be the same thing you do if you had your interaction code in here in the first place because you just need to be within this box collision but we're just doing it slightly differently now and again, more efficiently. So we're gonna compile and save that and that should now be the code fully done and working for us. So let's close this and hit play to test it out. If I were over here pressing E, nothing's gonna happen. But if I go up to my door and press E, we're gonna interact with the door and it's gonna open and close like so. Because again, we're firing off the interaction code from our player blueprint which is then using an interface to interact with this door here to then fire off our interaction code, which again for me is opening and closing perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up blueprint interfaces and gone over how they work and hopefully you now understand them a lot better and so you could utilize them within your game. And again, I've given an example here of an interaction interface as that is also probably the most common place you're gonna use them. But in one project I'm working on, I've got so many interfaces for so many different things because again, it's just a really efficient way of, of doing things. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.